started. So the first element we're going to look at making is the rough edges element. Uh, as you remember, created the grooves along the edges of the cutout. And to do that, I'm going to import a texture that you've already got. It's called Cracked Concrete. So that's in the assets for this project. And then I'm just going to scale it up till it fits the frame. So let's have a look at my project setup. I've started with a default of 1920, 1080. We're not worried about the duration here because it's just a still. So let's just adjust the height of this because we just want a thin strip. I'm going to go to for a height of 26 and leave the width at 1920. Uh, what I'm going to do is add to this group a rectangular mask. Zoom out a little bit so we can cover the whole thing. I'm going to draw larger than I need. I'm going to center it up. Then I'm going to come to the mask size. 1920 is going to be fine for the width and the height I'm going to go for 20. And then let's zoom in so we can see how this is working. So I've left a few pixels uh, spare. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Filters, Stylize, Crystallize, because I want to make the edge rough like so. Turn the speed down to zero, not that it matters, because we're, again, we're just using a still. And then I'm also going to add a color levels, because we need to get rid of, if we look at the alpha channel quickly, you'll see that We've got some semi-transparent areas here, and I want to just remove those. And what we'll do is on the levels, select alpha, bring the white way down and the black in to meet it. And then I think you can see now we've got a, a, a cleaner, rough edge. And what I want to do is I want to add an extra element here, and that is above, inside the group, but above the cracked concrete, I want to add a gradient so grab the gradient, bring that in, come to the inspector. Uh, let's select the preset called grayscale. And let's set its blend mode to multiply. And I just want to set up this generator, open up the gradient there. We need to adjust the Y start and end to match the height of our project. If you remember, we had 26 for the height. So I'm going to enter 13 which is half of 36, 26 for the start and negative 13 for the end. And now the gradient is running top to bottom of our actual image, despite the fact it's only 26 pixels high. So I'm just going to grab that white value and just bring it down a bit so it subjectively feels like the white is halfway through. And I might also just add a levels to this uh, cracked concrete just to intensify the black, I think. And now what we can do is we can select share, we can save current frame, and what we need to do is we need to select PNG from the drop down there, and then next, and we can save it not to there, we can save it as rough edges. So that one's done. So now let's look at something a bit sexier, and that's the slash itself, the bright, uh, the bright light that, that creates the effect. So I'm in a new project, again, 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second. I'm going to make the duration one second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the circle tool and draw a small circle. That circle can be five in radius. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make an emitter out of that. So object, make particles. So first of all, I'm going to animate this, the emitter's position. So I'll come to the first frame. Uh, let's center it up. Let's hit a keyframe. And I want negative 1200 on X. And then I'm going to step forward to 12 frames and have a value of 960, positive 960 on X. And you'll see that that sort of fires it across the frame like that, and we can start to set it up. So then let's look at animating the particle birth rate. So at frame zero, I'm going to keyframe the birth rate and set it to zero. 
going to step forward to three frames. I'm going to set that birth rate to a thousand. Step forward to nine frames. Set that down to 500 and come to 13 frames and set it back down to zero. Now let's fix the opacity over life. So I'm going to make a new tab there by clicking on that bar and set its opacity to zero. And let's just uh, set up the life for these particles. Instead of five, we want 0.5, so half a second. And that'll result in something like that. Let's add a bit of speed randomness. So I'm going to go for 25. What I also want to do is I want to come back to my original circle and I want to come to its style. And let's set a fairly hefty feather of 20. Let's also add filters, stylize, crystallize to it. Uh, let's leave it at the default. That's going to be fine. We can use that nice buzziness that it's giving us. And let's come back to the, uh, the emitter or rather the, the particle cell there. And we're going to set up its scale and we're going to have a scale of 40 and a scale randomness of 40. Then let's come to the emitter itself and let's just adjust that emission range down to about 50 because we don't want them spreading out quite so much. A little bit of spread is good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate that particle cell I'm going to call it uh, lines, I think. And then I'm going to bring in from the library uh, content, particle images, and then I'm going to search for something called light brush. So I've just typed a light in there. Is that going to give it to me? No, I need to go on a bit more light brush. There we go. So I found light brush by typing that into the search and I'm just going to bring it in into a new group and I can turn it off. Then into that lines particle cell, I'm going to bring in that element there. And you can see that's that's quite a fun effect. So let's go for a scale of 10 and a scale randomness of five. Let's also look at the angle here. So I'm going to go for an angle of say 100 and then an angle randomness of 360. And you can see this giving these nice little nice spikes. They're really, really adding to the effect rather, rather nicely. So now let's make this a little bit more intense by adding color, open EXR tone map. I'm going to set that exposure value to four. And you can see that's really pushed everything through. And what I also want to do is add some motion blur to it, but I'm not going to use motion blur itself. I'm going to come to blur, directional blur, because we know what the direction actually is. And I'm going to enter a value of 30 there. And now we've got something that looks like that. What I also want to do is I want to create the effect of some glow. So this group I'm going to clone. So make clone layer, and I'm going to add the Gaussian blur filter to it. And I'm going to duplicate that twice. So Command D, Command D. I'm going to set the first one to 64, the second one to 128, and the last one to 512. And I just want to reduce that top one there down to 30% mix, and this one here to 60% mix. And hopefully you can see how that is now giving us a kind of glow effect. Then we can render this out. So come to the share menu, export movie. This time we're going to select ProRes 444. And then we can hit next. And we're going to call this slash fire. And we can render that out. So now let's take a look at the thing that I called burn texture, which was the thing we used to kind of create a little fiery uh, element inside the groove. Uh, and I will admit that what I did was I sort of cheated and I used 
the fractal noise in After Effects because it's just so much easier to get nice results. But then I thought, okay, I, I probably need to try and find a way of doing it in motion. So this is what I came up with. I'm going to make my project three seconds long. So again, it's 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to generators and bring in clouds. So let's set up the clouds generator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a width of 800 and a height of 480. I want to set the horizontal and vertical scale to 8 and I'm going to crank the speed up to 1. I'm also going to open up the gradient and make the black not quite so black. So I think I'm going to come for about 10% uh, brightness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add filters, distortion, twirl. And the default is going to be fine because then what we're going to do is we're going to add to our group, we're going to add filters, tiling, random tile. So I'm going to set the radius to 120 and the feathering to 0.65. And then in order to get this to fill the frame, I'm going to set the group to fixed resolution. And finally, I'm going to come to the clouds and I'm going to apply uh, animation to the offset. So click on that and add the rate behavior. We want to make sure it's object clouds offset all because I want both X and Y. And I'm going to enter a value of negative 0.1. And what that will do is just give us a little bit of a drift on it. And now this is actually looking fairly like the elements that I made in After Effects with the fractal noise. And it will certainly work for this project. So what we can now do is we can export movie, share export movie. We can call this burn texture. And it doesn't need to be too, too fancy. I'm going to go with ProRes Proxy to keep this file size small. And we can render that out. So another element that I used was some smoke. So let's set that up. Our project this time is going to be 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, three seconds long. And what I did was I used one of the built-in uh, particle emitters. Uh, and that's the one called Shoot Smoke. So let's apply that. And obviously we needed to do quite a bit of work to make it work for what we want to do because it just shoots up like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to animate its position. So come to the first frame, come to its position. Let's keyframe that. And let's set an X value of negative 990. Then I want to come forward to around 108 and set that X value to positive 990. And now we've got the smoke shooting across the frame like that. Uh, one of the things I want to do is open up the smoke and come to the, its drag behavior there and just reduce that down a bit. So I'm going to go for 1.1. And now let's set up the particle cell. I want a life of 1.5 and a life randomness of 1. Let's go for a speed of 100 and a speed randomness of 100. And then what we need to do is we need to keyframe the birth rate. So I'm going to come to the beginning and set a keyframe for both the birth rate and the birth rate randomness. So birth rate is going to be 850 and the randomness say 36. Going to come forward to 12 frames. Going to increase that birth rate up to 1000. I'm going to come forward to 19 frames and I'm going to bring that back down to 850. And then at 107 on the timeline, let's set them both down to zero. And now we've got something that looks like that. So we can render this out, share, export movie, and we're going to go for ProRes 444 this time. And let's call it smoke. So finally, let's come on to the particles. Let's check our project settings again. 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, three seconds. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Bezier tool and I'm going to draw a rough trapezoid like so. Uh, center it up. Doesn't really matter too much what, what the shape is. Uh, I think that'll do, I might have made it a little bit too big, but that's that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to make an emitter of this. So object, um, make particles, and let's set this up. So for the shape, let's go for rectangle, and let's go for random fill. Now let's have a look at the size. What I did uh, with my size is I made the width 300 just as a default, but I made the height to be 90, so it would more or less uh, work with the size of the, um, the, the slash that we've got. I want to set the emission range down to five. The life I'm going to set to three, the life randomness to one. The speed I'm going to set at 2000, speed randomness 750. Uh, let's have an angle randomness of 360. We want these particles to spin as well, so I'm going to go for negative 360, and let's have a, like a 10 degree spin randomness. Let's also work on the opacity over life. So let's click on the bar there, make a new tab, drag it to the end and set it down to zero. And then let's look at the scale. We're going to go for 20%, oh sorry, scale there, 20% on the scale and 20% on the scale randomness. Looks like that. I think probably I made my initial object a bit too big. We want to, we want something a little bit smaller than this. So I think I'm going to go for sort of like, uh, let's try 15 and 15. Maybe still too big. Let's go for 12 and 12. I think that's probably going to work fairly well. So now I'm going to add some behaviors. So I'm going to, first of all, select, uh, no, from particles, I'm going to select scale over life. I'm going to, from simulations, I'm going to select uh, gravity. And also from simulations, I'm going to select drag in that order. So Working backwards, I'm going to set a drag amount of one. The gravity, I'm going to crank up to 350. And the scale of a life, we want 100% at birth and 30% at death. And that's giving us this effect here. So all that remains to be done is to keyframe the birth rate. So at the first frame, I'm going to set a birth rate of 500. And I'm going to step forward to something like five frames and set it to zero. So then we'll just get a blast that flies off like that. Now, the good thing about this is it's probably going to work no matter how you rotate it. And the only thing you'll need to, to adjust, as I mentioned, is you'll need to adjust the width of the rectangle depending on how wide the object is that you're trying to uh, blow up. And so in, if you're increasing the width, you'll, you'll certainly want to increase the number of, of particles. So here, uh, so we've trebled the width, so we'll need to treble the number of particles, something like that. So we're not going to render this out because we need it to be live. And all we need to do is we need to file save as, and let's call it particles. And obviously, in order to be able to use this in your master project, uh, you'll just open up this project alongside it and then copy. And you can just paste that into the master project. It might help if you'd actually renamed this group as particles, and then that would come through as the right name. 